I request Mr. Uh, Vinit Sukumar, Founder and Managing Director, Vivriti Capital Private Limited. Uh, also, C.B. Vargas, Circle Head, Emerging Business, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Airtel Businesses. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar, Director of Agency Tata AIA Life Insurance Company Limited. And Mr. Abhiram uh, Tritha, SMB Account Manager, go to. Uh, very good morning to all. Vanakkam. Uh, this is the uh, rare occasion where I have seen uh, three dignitaries from uh, government of Tamil Nadu on the same dais. Ministry of MSME, Ministry of Industries, and uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Industrial Development Corporation. That shows the efforts of this uh, Indian uh, manufacturers and uh, uh, SME summit that, uh, and Mr. Saluke in particularly, that uh, he can bring the masses together on the stage. It's a very good momentum because uh, I was involved with this uh, um, SME uh, uh, um, association for a long time since my Mumbai days. I worked in Mumbai for a long time and I'm in touch with Mr. Saluke for a long time. So, uh, uh, friends, coming uh, before coming on the main theme, uh, I will just introduce about the Indian Bank. What is Indian Bank? Uh, Indian Bank is uh, uh, more than 115 years old bank and uh, having its headquarter at Chennai where we are having this uh, program today. Uh, Indian Bank, as you all know, that uh, it was founded as a part of Swadeshi movement. And uh, in 2020, earlier it was basically a south and west bank, bank west, south and west, southern and western part, we have a good presence. And in 2020, uh, the merger of Indian Bank, Allahabad Bank took place. Allahabad Bank was having a presence in north and eastern part. So with that particular merger, this bank become a pan-India bank. So uh, we have presence uh, throughout the country, all over India, and providing services to specifically MSMEs. If you see the um, uh, Indian Bank, it is uh, doing uh, extremely well and uh, uh, shown a very good performance in all the major business parameters. Uh, the bank is having business of around 10.5 lakh crores with advances of around 4.20 crores. Uh, the business during the, uh, this financial year in particular, uh, December, it has grown by 9%, the deposit by 6%, and the advances by 13% on YOY basis. You can see the advances are growing like anything. Uh, we had a very bad phase in between, entire uh, the economy because of this COVID. Now we have come out to the COVID and you can see the industry growth all over country and specifically MSMEs are growing at a very, very fast pace. The, if you see the asset quality of the bank, this is about the performance. If you um, see the asset quality of the uh, bank, our net NPO is around 1%, which is among the lowest in the industry. Uh, if you see the uh, other parameters, other parameters, you can see the uh, business parameters like yield on advances, NIM, CRAR, ROE, everything is uh, growing and everything is being reflected in the performance of uh, Indian Bank share in the market also. It is consistently improving over a period of time. Uh, if you see the bank uh, branch network, we have around 5,800 branches. We have around uh, 5,000 ATMs. We have BCs. We have a very good BC uh, network. More than 10,000 BCs are there all over India. We have three overseas branches. and. Uh, so we, in all, we have more than 21 touch points all over the country internationally also. Uh, RAM, RAM means the retail, agri, and MSME. This is the focus area of Indian bank. And uh, this RAM sector contributes about 62% of the Indian bank advances. So our bank is basically focused on this particular sector, retail, agri, and MSME. And MSME is one of the important part. If you see the last two, three years performance, Indian bank has been growing better than the other public sector banks, particularly if you see the large banks also. And uh, uh, under priority sector, the focus, why I'm telling all these things? Because that shows that Indian bank is more focused on this particular sector, RAM sector. 
Uh, as per the uh, mandatory requirement, the priority sector advances should be 40%, and we are at 45%. Many of the banks, they are approaching various other financial institution to make up their priority sector advances. But if you see Indian Bank, it is growing organically, and we have our priority sector advances more than 45% of the total advances. Now, why all these things? Now, uh, we'll come to the ma main theme uh, about the MSME. Why so much focus is there on MSME? MSME sector has been a key focus area uh, for the, all the policy makers. You take the state government or the central government. Why so? Because it is very important for overall economic growth and development in terms of the employment, value chain creation, foreign exchange earnings, support to the large industries, promotion of regional imbalance, and inclusive development. These two things, which is the regional balance and inclusive, develop, in, uh, inclusive development, MSMEs plays a very, very vital role. Uh, that's why, for, because of these reasons, MSMEs are considered as the growth engine or backbone of Indian economy. You can see their significant contribution to the GDP. It is around 29 to 30 percent. Industrial output, 45 percent. And the export is more than 50 percent. And the more important is that it provides employment to the large section of the society. Uh, now coming to Indian Bank about MSME. Indian Bank is very proactive in extending uh, financial and non-financial services to support the MSMEs. And to support this, Indian Bank is having around 21 tailor-made schemes depending on the industry-specific need of the industry and the location. Normally what we do, we formulate, we formulate various schemes depending on the location and industry. The, I will come on that later, later, later cluster part. We have various uh, uh, schemes like uh, SME Secure, Tradewell, Doctor Plus, My Own Shop, Springboard, and more importantly, uh, recently we have launched the open term loan scheme for the MSMEs. What is open term loan? Actually, basically, you know the MSMEs is, the owner is all in all. They take care of all the needs, whether it's a technology, whether it's a financial, whether it's a marketing, everything, they have limited resources. So everything is being taken care by, indirectly I can say by the owner. In that case, they don't have much time, they don't have much power for preparing their project report and giving the financials to the financial institution, banks for sanction of the loan. So we thought innovatively that why don't we come out with the open term loan scheme. Suppose some, it is basically for the existing customers and they have something in their plan for further expansion over the period of one or two years. So what we do normally, if you see the ma majority of the uh, entrepreneurs uh, attending this uh, summit will be having knowledge that these working capital facilities are being renewed or reviewed on year on year basis. So when, when that time, at the time of review renewal itself, you submit your financial paper in one lot. And that time, whatever planning you have in your mind for uh, expansion, submit your requirements, term loan requirements, your capex requ requirement without submitting the entire overall outlay, overall plan, bank will give a sanction of term loan, say it's a 10 crores for your expansion plans. And when you get the order, and when your uh, plans are taking a shape, that time you approach the bank with the, your quotation invoices, and the loan will be provided immediately without taking much time. So this is basically for saving the time and energy of the MSMEs uh, by giving the uh, loan at the beginning of the year. So as and when uh, you have the orders in hand, because MSME is, is a very uh, peculiar financing, because we are dependent. We are dependent to some extent on these large scale industries. And they give, I want this order to be completed within a period of two months. And when you start from that point, from zero point, that collecting the data, getting quotation, approaching the bank, getting sanction, by the time these two months will be over. So better to have a plan at the beginning itself. Some take the open term loan and as and when it is required, complete the order and grow it. I am there with uh, this banking industry for more than 25 years and I've seen the people who have availed a loan of one lakh or two lakhs as a micro enterprises has 
come to the medium, mid corporate and large, large sector. I have seen the progressing progress of MSMEs from this micro to they have ventured into the large scale industry. So this is basically what is planning is needed. So uh, Indian Bank, if you see, uh, we have as of now around more than 77,000 77, crore of the business. And this business, we have extended these facilities to around more than 20 lakhs MSME customers. So it is not that we are se focusing on medium segment only. We have a lot of focus on micro and small sector also. That is reflecting in the numbers. 20 lakhs customers, more than 77,000 crore of the finance. If you see the MSME advance of our bank also, overall advance, banks advance, 70, 17% is towards MSMEs. In terms of MSME business, if you see, we are the sixth largest public sector bank and we are targeting more than 15% YOY growth from 22, 23 onwards. So um, um, we are ready to be your business partners, whatever your plans are there, your business growth plans are there. Uh, what uh, we are doing basically for uh, MSMEs, uh, the one thing is that uh, the cluster-based uh, financing. This is an innovative approach because there will be uh, uh, strong forward and backward linkage as our uh, MSME, MSME Secretary, Government of Tamil Nadu also ma mentioned that a lot of clusters are there in Tamil Nadu on all over India. So uh, what we do, we um, identify the clusters and in this identify the clusters and these things, we take a lot of help from uh, these uh, association, industry association, MSME association. We identify the cluster, we discuss with this association, entrepreneurs, and we formulate a tailor-made scheme. What is suiting to the customers? What is they require? Suppose we uh, found in some of the area that uh, uh, the entrepreneurs, they import the second-hand machinery from Germany, other places for the quality production, and the second-hand machineries are not being financed. So in that particular uh, cluster, we'll have a focus on financing the second-hand machineries and all these things. If you see uh, uh, Indian Bank, we have 83 clusters. 83 clusters we are having pan India. And uh, if we see, as uh, um, uh, 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 Mr. Krishnan mentioned, that they have the common facilities. They have the common, uh, suppose it's a chemical cluster, they have the chemi chemi uh, to ke chemical treatment plant, effluent plant, and these things. So there are common facilities developed by uh, um, associations and the various government supporting bodies. And the asset quality, if you compare in these clusters, is far, far better as compared to general MSMEs. So I will encourage the entrepreneurs to put their unit in these clusters where all these forward and backward linkages are available. Uh, uh, coming to the quality uh, perspective, uh, Indian Bank has been giving a uh, lot of incentives on uh, suppose you get the Z certification, ISO certification, and you repay your loan in time. Lot of incentives are being uh, provided to uh, MSM industries uh, for the growth. Indian Bank has taken uh, uh, several initiatives. Normally what we do, uh, one thing is the targeted marketing. I think you would have seen in recent past that we have approached the various uh, industrial estate, especially as uh, mentioned, Sipcot and other places. We conduct targeted campaigns there. We conduct meetings. We call the uh, customers to show our products. And uh, with the target market, uh, marketing and the feedback, we keep improving up on our product. So this is, uh, a, we take a lot of feedback and based on suggestions, a lot of improvements are happening. Another initiative, this mudra loans. Um, so many uh, people will be available. Mudra loan, we have started a digital journey. You need not go to any branch. You need not go to any other uh, um, uh, forum. Just you log in in Indian web website or through Indoasis app or uh, internet banking or your mobile banking service, Indian bank mobile banking services. You log in there. The process will automatically take care including uploading your invoice and everything. And if you are the existing customer, immediately the amount will be credited based on the assessment. It takes hardly half an hour. And uh, as mentioned by Salnuke Saab, that like the uh, URC numbers and these things are very important 
and uh, we do not know the hidden benefit of these uh, URC numbers the, and the other initiative taken by the government of India. I request from this forum that we should have URC registration. With that, a lot of digital journey Indian Bank is coming. Um, if you see, uh, we have started. If you uh, normally, uh, MSMEs, they don't have much manpower. Say, I, they approach NBFC. Don't take it otherwise, sir. Uh, <laughs> my friend from Vivruti is up uh, there. Uh, NBFCs little bit rates are more, rate of interest are more, and we public sector bank. If you see the rate of interest, it is comparatively le uh, comparatively less because we have other we have uh, the resources. They have the manpower. They have the different strategy. So uh, RBI has permitted, and Indian Bank uh, is expanding its outreach to MSMEs through co lending by collab collaborating with the uh, NBFCs. What will happen, you will, the MSMEs will get a uh, um, uh, loan at a comparatively better rate. And it is a win-win situation for the bank as well as for the customers and the NBFCs also. With co-lending, we are able to provide the need-based finance to MSME in time-bound manner because they have the speed, they have the informal way of uh, doing the business, and we have the resources. So please, uh, uh, Indian Bank is more involved in this, and also if you see the trades platform, Many of the MSMEs, they are not taking the uh, benefit of trades platform where rate of interest is comparatively less. And Indian Bank is very, very active on that platform and MSMEs are getting uh, finance at a comparatively lesser rate based on the, uh, their anchors rating. Their anchors also involved in this uh, financing. Now coming uh, to the financial part, if you approach the banks, a lot of paperwork is involved. And MSMEs, they don't have that much resources to provide the financial papers and these things. Indian Bank has come out with cash flow based lending. Based on your GSP turnover, you will in your go to the bank. It is a, a digital product, you can log in. And based on your GST turnover, bank will arrive, your working capital requirement and the eligible amount will be credited to your account. And no need to visit the bank documentation and everything will happen digitally. You can have your sanction ticket online on uh, your email itself and the designated account will be credited once the loan is sanctioned. Please take advantage of this. And we are also onboarding, onboarding the GSP Sahai portal and JAM portal, which is basically for the advantage of uh, uh, MSMEs. Those who are not registered on these portals, GST is high and JAM portal, please register. Once you register there, automatically banks will be approaching you for the financial support. This is a forum created by government of India and I feel it is very useful. Though the uh, uh, level of the finance, the quantum of the uh, amount, quantum may be less, but it is very useful, very informal and at a competitive rate. Now coming to the startup. Startup is a very uh, growing field now, and uh, startup ecosystem is growing at 15% in India, and there is a very good potential, business potential for this. Indian Bank has made a specific product, uh, that is in the springboard, wherein we provide the finance to the startup, and uh, we have so far uh, MOUs with uh, reputed institution, 12 uh, MOUs we have already entered, like uh, IIT, uh, Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai, IIMs, SRM, and we have already 12 M MOUs and a lot of uh, um, uh, these uh, startups, they are approaching us for financing. Please take advantage of these facilities. We have a stall outside and all these products are being uh, are displayed there. Please take advantage. It is a very liberal scheme and um, we are getting a lot of uh, requests from uh, various IITs and some other institutions for financing this startup. It is a very good uh, um, uh, product and uh, to my surprise, uh, there is no dealing cases and the product is doing well. Please take advantage of this product. One more thing, uh, MSME Prerna. MSME Prerna is uh, one of the uh, flagship uh, initiative of Indian Bank in extending hand holding support to the MSMEs and equip them to handle their business professionally. What we do? We provide online training programs to MSMEs. 
to make them professional, a better entrepreneur. The best thing, this program was launched by uh, our uh, Honorable Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitharamanji, and is appreciated by uh, Government of uh, India and RBI. This is a very innovative in initiative, and uh, we extend these training programs to MSMEs. It is um, uh, sponsored by bank only in local languages. So far, we, have, we are conducting this program in seven languages. It is there available in Tamil Nadu also. Support is in Tamil Nadu, it is in Tamil. Uh, go to Andhra, it is in Telugu. Go to Rajasthan, it is in Hindi. We have programs because language is the main uh, thing which connects with the uh, participant entrepreneurs. And this program has been very, very successful. And uh, out of around 1,500 people we have trained in this, out of that, Almost 50% of the entrepreneurs, they have taken advantage of Indian Bank scheme. And I'm very happy to inform that they are growing their business and their credit limits are also, which was in thousands earlier at that beginning, it is coming in lakhs and they are doing very well. This, um, uh, this is a very good initiative. And uh, I think um, uh, we are having fo focus on these four things. Uh, mainly to uh, they building their confidence, their commitment level, communication, and culture. We are teaching them how to read the balance sheet. It's a very s small thing only, but they should understand what will be my daily, uh, how, what will be my cash flow. They should understand how the money, how to do the marketing, and all these things. It has been very, very successful in local language in, in times to come. We are planning that by 20, 2024, we'll have presence in all the state in local language. Lo local language. We are having a, uh, a tie-up with uh, various uh, trainers, those who are expert in giving these sort of trainings. Uh, if you see the uh, uh, Indian Bank, uh, we have got a uh, lot of awards for uh, um, uh, um, uh, doing, uh, uh, taking inno innovative steps and doing very good in MSME, like Best Innovative Bank, uh, Best Bank for Implementing COVID-Related Government Scheme. I'm very happy to inform at this moment that there was a COVID related issues and uh, Indian bank was the bank wherein the highest number of the entrepreneurs in terms of the business and the amount we extended these COVID related facilities, which we call GECLS. If you compare with the large banks, I don't want to name the banks. It was the highest among the industry, among the public sector bank and which helped a lot to the MSMEs. And if you see, uh, because of that help, initiative the government of India and uh, the um, uh, uh, MSMEs have been able to survive the shock of the COVID. And if you see, now the, it has come on the growth path and there is a very good momentum and it is showing very, very good growth. In Tamil Nadu, we have specifically more presence and uh, various government schemes like uh, PMEGT and other schemes. We have shown a very, very, uh, good uh, performance. Now coming to one or two, I'll another take two, three minutes, where, uh, apart from having very uh, collaboration MOU with reputed manufacturers. Uh, uh, this many manufa machinery manufacturers and uh, you take the OEMs like Asok Leland. We have tie up with them. And once the customer approach to them, they ap do approach us. And uh, we get the lead from them and we uh, um, provide the finance to the MSME customers. MSME customer is benefited by extended warranty. Suppose Asok Leland, you approach and take the loan from Indian bank, they will be giving two years extended warranty and some uh, scope for some discounts also. So please, uh, another thing, uh, the cluster formation, uh, we are having focus on supply chain financing uh, which is basically dealer financing, vendor financing, and the vendors who are supplying to these anchor, uh, anchors are basically MSMEs. So this vendor financing, the another uh, thing, by the month end, we'll be onboarding uh, for this also. And uh, we have focus on trust on uh, green financing also. We are having a specific scheme for financing these e-vehicles. You take two wheelers, you take three wheelers, and uh, we had tie-up, especially we had uh, tie-up with TVS and some other three, four OEMs who are manufacturing these uh, 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 vehicles, e-vehicles for financing. Please take advantage of that. At last, I am very thankful to the MSME uh, Chamber of India, MSME Export Promotional Council, 
and the Federation of Indian MSME Association for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts on the topic. And uh, I wish all the success uh, for this uh, India Manufacturers SME Summit. And I'm sure that uh, this summit will definitely inspire these SMEs to take their business to next level. Thank you. Uh, we are the basically Tamil Nadu ba based bank and uh, headquarter is here. So uh, we are open. If any uh, suggestions or anything is there, please give in our stall. Uh, we'll try to implement the things. Thank you for patience, thank you for time, and my special thanks for uh, this uh, uh, MSME Chamber of uh, uh, India, this, uh, and today to uh, launching of this Women Entrepreneurship Entrepreneurs Development Council in Tamil Nadu State and uh, Tamil Nadu Business Forum, uh, Networking Business Forum. I wish all the best to them. I forgot one thing that uh, for this uh, women entrepreneurs, Indian Bank has been performing very good and uh, Stand Up India, we have achieved more than 100% target. In Stand Up India, I think uh, you all will be knowing it is a scheme for uh, women entrepreneurs and recently, recently though it's a small lending only for SRGs, for SRGs who want to progress into entrepreneurs. Indian Bank has launched a scheme called MSME Saki, wherein the SRGs who have paid their one cycle of the uh, loan can avail the loan from Indian Bank under that particular scheme at a very competitive rate, and they can progress in times to come to become entrepreneurs, MSME Saki. Please take advantage of that. And uh, thank you once again for giving this opportunity and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm uh, thankful to Narendra Kumar Sharma, sir, GM Indian Bank, to taking us uh, to the entire journey of the Indian Bank as well as the product and services offered to the MSME sector. Friends, you know, uh, banking is providing a lot, many support to the uh, industry, manufacturing industry, as well as uh, in addition to that, NBFCs are also playing a very important role. So we have today Mr. Vinit Sukumar, Founder and Managing Director, Vibriti Capital Private Limited. So one of the keynotes uh, address uh, here. So he is talking of the sustainable uh, date finance for uh, emerging business. I'll uh, welcome Mr. Vinit uh, Sukumar, and I'll request all the dignitaries on the dais to please adhere their time. Thank you, please. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thanks to the organizers for having me over, and uh, sir, thanks for your kind words as well. Uh, we are certainly proud to be associated with Indian Bank and have had a, had a very strong relationship with them for the last five years odd. Uh, while the presentation comes up live, uh, a brief introduction on who we are and uh, what we do. Uh, so, Vibriti Capital is Chennai, Chennai based. We are based out of uh, Thousand Lights. We have an office there. We are located in now eight locations across the country. Uh, we are a five-year-old, six, nearly six-year-old organization. Uh, we have grown to rough nearly eight, uh, nearly eight thousand crores in terms of asset size uh, since the last five years. We support close to eight hundred. Uh, SMEs and uh, mid corporates today across the country in close to 39 sectors. Uh, possibly every sector that you can think about, right from uh, renewable energy to mining to ports to logistics to steel to auto to financial services to food and beverage, restaurants, trading, uh, exports is supported by Vibriti Capital today. Now, um, Vibriti Capital uh, has uh, uh, essentially become, over time, a multi-product organization. We began by giving term loans to our clients. Uh, we have slowly diversified. Today, we offer access to close to, to, to around nine products, ranging from loans uh, to working capital finance, cash credit, uh, vendor finance, dealer finance, factoring, equipment leasing, securitization, uh, and a host of many other products across the landscape of debt finance. Very soon we will start offering uh, FX, uh, import and export finance as well uh, through our branch in the gift city. Uh, so bro broadly, um, we, are a f we are a company that's completely focused on mid-market. Uh, we are a company completely focused on SMEs that are looking to scale. 
Vibhuti stands for entrepreneurs and Vibhuti stays stands to support entrepreneurs across uh, across their needs for debt financing. Uh, our six year journey has been has been has been great. Uh, we are a we are a 250 member team cutting across like I said uh, uh, eight nine locations across the country. Uh, we have today built access to a large franchise of entrepreneurs and we are very proud to be in Tamil Nadu very proud to be in Chennai very proud to engage with the com with the business community here in meeting the needs of all of you uh, in this room and beyond uh, we are today a combination of two companies uh, we have an NBFC which is called Vibhuti Capital we have an asset management company called Vibhuti Asset Management uh, it, uh, our structure is not important what's important is what is there for you and what is there for you is our ability to serve you across a variety of debt products. So we are not limited to loans, as I said, loans, working capital, uh, bonds, commercial paper, uh, vendor finance, dealer finance, factoring, leasing, uh, and eventually moving into FX, right? As you can imagine, for companies that are today in this, in, in the, of the vintage that we are, there said there has been an extremely heavy reliance on technology to be able to be much much faster right and speed has been a single biggest factor in our ability to serve our clients today for example from the for, for uh, product like dealer or vendor finance it is a same day disbursement for a product like a term loan which could be cash flow backed or asset backed from the point of knowing you till the point of disbursement we can do it in 10 to 12 days right so we save time we save time, we save money, we allow you to meet your business objectives, we allow you to meet your business objectives in a timely manner. And that's what we stand for as an organization. Lots of milestones in the last five years, ranging from our own credit rating to our size, to our scale, to our ability to raise capital. Uh, we manage, as I said today, a book that is nearly 8,000 crores. We, have, we are backed by nearly 1,600 crores of equity raised from domestic and foreign sources. Uh, we are today uh, A-rated, which allows us to be able to serve across a range of interest rates uh, and be able to provide you with very, very affordable and timely finance. Fundamentally, uh, as a company, uh, what we stand for is the, our ability to be responsive to needs, our ability to tailor the product to your requirements, and for our ability to be fast. Speed is extremely important. We recognize being a being a first generation entrepreneur myself, I recognize the importance of speed, the importance of money now when you need it rather than later. And that is how our teams are trained and oriented to delivering uh, money when you need money. Uh, we've had a good run so far. Our gross NPA today is a quarter percent. Uh, so we've had the privilege to be associated with great clients who have been also partners in our journey with us uh, till date. Coming to the topic at hand, which is on sustainable debt financing, this is a very specific vertical within Vibriti that deals with the entire space of being oriented towards climate change and the effects of climate change and mitigating the same. This we see across various areas. I will not spend too much time, but just to, but slides are self-explanatory. Clean energy is a big area where we have financed right from rooftop solar to uh, EPC to, to, the, to um, projects that are dealing with the conversion of biomass to electricity. So clean energy has been a big area for us to focus on. Uh, and we continue to have multiple clients in Tamil Nadu as well as across the country that are in the space. Uh, this ranges right from production to transportation to manufacturing. Uh, and we cover the entire space today uh, in this market. Agriculture, uh, agriculture in terms of building uh, post-harvest linkages, pre-harvest uh, pre support. Now this is not to farmers, we are not a retail company, we are a mid-market focused company, so we deal with SMEs that are operating in the space that help farmers build linkages to the market, that help farmers trade their produce, that reduce, reduce the dependence on intermediaries, as well as provide technology solutions, right? Uh, we have today several clients in this market, including in, including in Tamil Nadu, that deal with production, manufacturing, transportation, logistics, market linkages, as well as uh, trading. Electric mobility, uh, an area of significant interest for us. So we deal with manufacturers, we deal with transporters, we deal with uh, uh, we deal with the we deal with dealers that manage inventory and sell. Uh, we also finance buyers uh, through our co-origination arrangement. So we cover the entire gamut of activity of an, of an electric vehicle, right from sourcing all the way to sale and financing, right? 
Uh, here we cover both electric two-wheelers and electric three-wheelers, and we are building a practice on the four-wheeler space as well as we speak. This is a big area of focus for Vivriti as an organization. Uh, and therefore, overall, uh, in the renewable space, there's a lot that we do to foster entrepreneurship, to ensure that the investment landscape is available for you and to generate impact in our work by supporting, by supporting uh, SMEs, by building employment, by building access to finance. And very, very importantly, not only access to finance, but access to capital markets, right? Pertinent to note that uh, one of the companies in our fold, which is uh, our asset management company, what do we do there? We raise debt funds, which brings in money from pension, from insurance, from banks, from global investors. These investors would never be able to directly access entrepreneurs like you and companies like you because you know, they are dealing with a very different profile of borrowers, right? Now we bring their money into, the, into our funds, we invest on their behalf and therefore in future as you scale and grow, as you come towards your IPO, as you come towards your public issue, as you come towards you know, higher ratings, you are able to access these investors directly tomorrow because they have already seen you through our funds. Right? That's a big part of our work and therefore it's important for us to build this so-called way for such investors to see you and access your companies. Specifically in the renewable space, here are examples of companies that we have, that we have worked with. Many companies are large, well-known, many companies are much smaller, many companies are startups. So over here, for example, large companies would be like a Hero Electric or a Hero Future Energies. Uh, completely new startups would be companies like Blue Smart, Log9, Battery Smart. Uh, companies that are today in the mid-sized space are Prespel, Fourth Energy and Seekers. So, a host of companies, as I mentioned, in renewables, in, in climate finance, uh, and in the sustainable space, we cover the entire gamut. Uh, in summary, uh, firstly, thank you for having me here to the organizers, uh, the Federation, and to all of you for patiently listening to me. In summary, Vibhuti is an organization that stands for entrepreneurship. Uh, we stand for unleashing ambition. That's what we believe very strongly. Our team is here today in the audience, and we would love to meet you, exchange cards, and see how we can work together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, may I call upon our next speaker, Mr. C.B. Vargas, on power growth with technology with Airtel Business. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I represent Airtel Business. I head the emerging business for Kerala and Tamil Nadu. And uh, would like to share a few thoughts and few opportunities what is available for the emerging business, uh, for the SME business here for you. So I just uh, I would like to take it uh, through the presentation now. Just wanted to let you know the power of the growth of the technology in SME segment. Are we truly digitalized? This is one of the questions which we have to ask ourselves. The first and foremost thing which will come into your mind is, do we have the interrupted connectivity? This is one of the you know, prime important parameter what you need when you are going for a digitalized mode. The second thing when you are talking about a digitalized mode, do we have our connectivity which is enterprise grade security we have it? The third one we will talk about is the data is protected from breach. We know that a lot of uh, you know, issues which are coming up in, 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 in this digitalized world. So is the data is protected is the question next we need to ask. Next thing is the digital assets is accessible from everywhere. Do we have that accessibility over you know, wherever we are? The next thing is, are uh, the solutions are limiting to your workforce collaboration? And finally, is the digital solutions are burning your pockets? These are the few parameters where we need to clearly, clearly understand when we talk about the digitalization. So Airtel technology, in case if you are looking at, we are the end-to-end -end technology enabler. You know, this is one of the uh, main connectivity provider uh, in the pan-India business, if you are looking at SME or in the enterprise segment, in case if you are looking at Airtel has a major share 
Airtel is one of the predominant players in almost every technology, every you know, aspect of the connectivity portion in case if you are looking at. What we do is what we connect or what we offer to the customer is, one is the connectivity portion we offer, the second thing is the IoT portion we offer, the third thing is the mobility portion, then we have cloud business, which would be you know, one of the emerging thing, which is there in the emerges, uh, you know, enterprise segments now, cybersecurity. Then we have Nextra, we have CPaaS, we have ads. So these are the, some of the aspects where it can be offered to the customer when we are talking about the SME as a segment. Talk about the data centers. Yet will have 12 large data centers pan India. We have 120 edge data centers and we have another six coming up in, in, in pan India in different locations. The, you know, on the right side, which is dotted in, in, in red, are the upcoming ones. We have an existing capacity of 36,000 racks and around 150 plus megawatts of power we have it. Adding, we have adding, we are adding new capacities of 32,000 racks and 300 plus megawatts of power we are adding. And we are, ex we are extensive investments in green energy and ambition to reach net zero by 2031, that's ambition what we have it. We have customers across all segments like global enterprise, then we have in government and we are in SMB. In Chennai itself, we have three data centers for your understanding. Then we are talking about the IoT, we are one of the number one players in IoT segment, we power from close to 49.3 percentage of IoT, that is the connectivity what we are talking about. We have around 8,000 plus customers in IoT, around 13 plus, 13 million plus devices are connected with Airtel. And we provide solutions like asset tracking, industrial IoT, location service, smart utilizers, smart utilities and you know, connected vehicles. These are very few IoT solutions what we are offering. Beyond that, there are many more to offer. Then we are talking about the Airtel IQ. We call it as the integrated CPaaS platform. We have around 130 billion transactions happening from 300 plus customers. The unified customer engagement platforms are videos, audios, and then messaging and contact centers, etc. Then we talk about the Airtel cloud. We have private cloud, we have public cloud, and we have edge cloud. And this is one of the you know, emerging segment, and this is one of the things which would be, you know, many of the people, many of the SMEs are looking at, at you know, launching their, or you know, storing their devices, storing their, uh, storing their uh, data in the cloud. We are there for almost everywhere. Unlock the next level of growth, Airtel Advantage, that is Airtel Arts that we have it. We have around 220 plus clients. We have around 35 plus industries we are present into. We have around 5x growth which is happening, you know, over and era and era. We have digitally, in case if we are talking about, we have Airtel Thanks app, we have Wink Music, we have Airtel Extreme. We are talking about television, we have Airtel ads, we have offline, offline OBD call ads, then we have SMS ads. These are the things what we can offer in Airtel ads. Above all, this is what we need to look at, uh, the protection of your data, protection of your you know, services. We have a cloud DDoS protection, we have endpoint security, and we have UTM as a service, we have it. This is, you know, everyone in this, in the, in this, in this, in this room has to be looking at, has to look at this kind of opportunity what is the security, what we can offer it. End-to-end -end portfolio of solutions we can offer, state-of-the-art intelligence center, what we have it, and we have weight class partnerships. This is what it is. And finally, the Airtel means business. We have customer needs, or we have one partner, we have customer and employee experience we have, convenience, and linear and cost-effective operations. This is what is there for the customer. And full stack of solutions in case if you are looking at Airtel intelligent internet and SD-WAN solutions what we have it. We have work from everywhere. 
Airtel IQ, transform your customer engagement, we have it. Airtel conferencing, enable simple securing and seamless conferencing, what we have it. Airtel IoT, which we have discussed it earlier. Accelerate your business with future ready IoT solutions. Airtel office internet, what we have it, everything your business needs, go digital. So this is what we have it. Connected infrastructures, what we have it. We have launched 5G here in Chennai now. We have connected with almost 1,850 plus sites in Chennai. Currently we are in, you might be, if your mobile phones are 5G enabled, you might be uh, receiving the signals of 5G. So wherever the 5G signals are available, you can use it without any charge. You know, the current data pooling would be enable you to, you know, get into that 5G space and use it wherever it is available. We have Nextra by Airtel. This is one of the data centers what we are talking about. Airtel Cloud. Reimagine your business with the cloud. That is what we can have it. Always on connectivity. That is what Airtel is all about. Whenever you are talking about, whenever you are looking for a connectivity, whenever you are looking for a secure solutions, when you are looking about the cloud, when you are looking about the storage, think about Airtel and we are there for you. The most trusted partners for more than 1 million businesses. This is what we have it. This is one of the largest, what we have it for the enterprise and the SMEs. We have more than, you know, if you're looking at the top 500 Indian companies identified by the Economic Times, trusted Airtel as a, you know, communication partner. We have around 1,200 plus global carrier partnerships we have. 200 plus enterprise and government clients we have it. 1 million plus small and medium enterprise clients we have. 440 plus million strong customer base. That makes Airtel very strong and that is what the trusted partner, uh, you know, all about for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the, you know, opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'll call upon uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar V, Director of Agency, Tata AI Life Insurance Company Limited. And uh, his topic is importance of life insurance for SMEs. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, SMB, uh, SME Chamber of India, SME Export Promotion Council, and uh, Federation of Indian SME Association for giving us the opportunity to present the importance of uh, protection coverage for the uh, you know, companies like you. So let me uh, directly, you know, go into the topic and uh, just, you know, give a small introduction about our company. Uh, Tata Life Insurance is one of the group company of Tata Group, and uh, we have got, you know, strong uh, experience of, you know, 150 years uh, in the country and uh, has got a great, uh, you know, market cap of USD, uh, 311 billion uh, dollars. And uh, we have got diverse business, uh, you know, as a group, Tata Group, you know, from soft to uh, salt to software. And uh, we have got almost, you know, 118 companies in Tata Group. So Tata Group doesn't require any introduction for all of us. So <coughs> we have got various, uh, you know, association with different kind of industries. Now, you know, we as Tata A Life Insurance, you know, in India, you know, we are the number three player in the country. And... Uh, uh, we have protected almost, you know, 70 lakhs families uh, here in India. And you may, uh, you might go wonder, you know, why life insurance here? Uh, the biggest problem what, uh, you know, uh, we are facing in the current uh, uh, day and age, uh, especially in the uh, SME sector as well as large corporate. Uh, the plan A is, you know, we are doing a you know, everyday work, you know, we are generating revenue, we are doing the business, you as a company, you are manufacturing and selling the, uh, you know, product and uh, getting the revenue. Uh, if something goes wrong to the particular, uh, you know, key person of the company, you know, what do we have, you know, in front of us? That is the main agenda for this, you know, today's topic. So we as Tata Life Insurance, you know, we have protected so many uh, corporates uh, here in India. And uh, we are very good on uh, claim settlement ratio as well. We are having 98.53% uh, claim settlement ratio. And uh, claims, you know, most of the claims are getting settled uh, in an express way. And uh, today, uh, you know, I'm here to discuss about, you know, this kind of uh, four uh, type of uh, insurance for the, uh, you know, SME sector. So one is employer-employee. Uh, the second one is partnership insurance. 
uh, the third one is in a key man insurance and uh, the fourth one is married women uh, protection act the thing is you know uh, as i told you uh, we are uh, you know almost giving least priority for the uh, you know key person of the company's protection action so we are, you know also you know we are very very lack on the uh, pro lack on protecting our employees as well in today's day and age uh, employer employee concept the relationship is very important we have got a lot of critical uh, you know resources in our uh, companies the key uh, persons and very very uh, you know uh, productive persons you know some of the time you know we are uh, uh, happen to lose them as well because of uh, the competition poach and all so today you know if you are having this employer employee insurance you know it would be a great help of you know yourself to uh, ensure the retention is happening uh, on the uh, right place we are retaining the particular talent for a longer period and also you know, along with that you know we are giving them a tax planning as well whatever uh, premium we are paying as a company you are paying for the particular employee that comes under a section 80c for the particular employee and uh, you know the employee is going to be very very happy see when the employee is going to is, is happy you know the productivity will get increased for sure and uh, you know ultimately the company is going to get benefit get benefited and uh, very importantly the employer also getting benefited under uh, tax exemption under the section 37 of 1 so it's a win win situation for the employer as well as employee and also we are retaining the retaining the very big talent so that's what is all about you know employer employee and which are the you know uh, companies can buy you know private limited company sole proprietorship companies uh, you know public limited companies corporate uh, cooperative banks trust societies partnership uh, firms limited li liability partnership firms you know all these firms and uh, companies can buy this particular policy so employer employee you know is nothing but you know it is to ensure that the talent is getting retained as well as you know you as a company you are getting a huge tax benefit uh, under section uh, 37 of 1 and when we are investing we, we are normally you know we are forget uh, you know investing on the employees and uh, losing the very good talent when we start investing on the employees we can retain the particular employee that will help the uh, you know uh, that will help us to uh, increase the productivity of the company now let us look at you know uh, first you know we looked at you know employer employee insurance the second is partnership insurance in tamil nadu especially in tamil nadu you know we have got a lot of partnership firms the biggest problem what we are facing is as i told you earlier you know we don't plan on the plan b at all if something goes wrong to wrong to the particular uh, you know a key person of the company or the partner for the company the, the, the firm is getting uh, disturbed on the financial uh, crisis, especially partnership insurance. We, we should not, you know, have any uh, kind of other, uh, you know, things, you know. First, the first important priority what we need to give is to ensure that the, all the partners are adequately covered uh, with the protection plan. So the protection, the partnership insurance is, you know, it is ensuring you to, if something happens to the partner, the company runs smoothly even after the demise of the partner the company runs smoothly with the and uh, the capital is not getting uh, you know disturbed at all so that's why you know in india you know especially in tata life insurance we focus more on business insurance like you know employer employee insurance and partnership insurance so when you put the partnership insurance you know uh, the all the partners are getting the confident and the uh, the firm is getting run you know even if you are losing a very very productive partner you know we are able to settle that particular family as well as it is helping the firm to run the business without any kind of you know, financial crisis so partnership insurance whoever runs you know partnership firms i request each and everyone to look at that look at the PC feasibility of getting this because you know the first for most importance you know you have to give uh, to get the uh, you know uh, partners protected so that in future if any unfortunate event happens the firm will not get dis, you know you know disturbed so this is very important one the third topic you know which i want to cover is in you know, a key man insurance most of the private limit, uh, you know you know private uh, companies you know has got directors and uh, you know each and every uh, company has got a key person and, and also we are seeing you know in some companies when they when they lose the key person of the company 
the company is getting suffered on the i know uh, you know financial crisis maybe the od will not be you know the properly it is not protected with the insurance and all so keyman insurance also is playing the same role as like you know partnership insurance so keyman insurance is nothing but in the particular person has to be get covered under 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 uh, you know under term uh, protection so this is also whatever premium which you are paying under keyman insurance or partnership insurance or uh, employer employee insurance the entire premium will be exempted uh, on the you know overall uh, gross income of yours so that you know you can save some good amount of tax you know while uh, returning so i just want you to you know uh, look at this uh, you know illustration and uh, uh, get some idea about it see uh, if you look at you know this case study mr rom is a director of uh, a company uh, you know he decided to take a dividend of 1 crore uh, from the company uh, but you know at the, at the same time you know, one of his friend is a life insurance advisor he suggested not to go for dividend but to go for a employer employee insurance you know on him you know on his name so this is the difference between when he is taking a dividend as well as you know he goes for uh, employer employee insurance if you look at you know when he goes for 1 crore as a dividend you know he has to pay you know the corporate tax of 25.17% so on the 1 crore he has to pay almost you know, 25.17 lakhs and second thing he has to pay his individual tax as well if he goes above 1 crore you know definitely all the private life insurance private uh, uh, companies uh, the the you know each and every uh, you know person's uh, director's average income it should be more than 1 crore only it is it is more than 1 crore only so he has to pay almost 35.88 percentage towards tax so totally you know he you know the the amount of net net income saved is only 38.95 lakhs from the dividend of 1 crore but when he goes for the employee employee insurance he is saving the uh, you know tax corporate tax absolute uh, saved you know almost you know 25.17 percent and only thing is you know he has to pay the individual tax that is also in the future the tax getting deferred here so he is saving almost you know 89.29 lakhs out of 1 crore uh, you know which he is i know uh, investing through employer employee insurance so there is a very big difference in tamil nadu and across the country you know we have protected many uh, smes and uh, large corporates i'm sure you know this will be also uh, definitely beneficial for you so uh, we have got a separate you know expert panel of chartered accountants we at tata life insurance can give you the clarity uh, you know how much tax you are going to get benefited and what is the overall protection coverage which uh, the, your i know partners as well as your key persons are having you know is going to have and very very simplified uh, you know uh, process papers documentation and all and we have got a dedicated underwriting team you know which can help you uh, to process this particular business insurance uh, process and also you know you know pretty well in insurance industry uh, you know when you are going for highest uh, higher sum assured you may uh, undergo for the medical management medical uh, examination that also we will uh, you know we are having a, a escort facilities which can help you to complete the medical in smoother uh, i know phase and very importantly you know we are have a, we are having a, a app called urja urja app urja is exclusively for uh, small and medium enterprises and uh, that app you know will give you the exact uh, uh, you know uh, ideas and guidance uh, when you are uh, going into that uh, particular app you know that will give you the uh, better solution so ladies and gentlemen you know we have our uh, you know stall here over here and you know we'll be here till uh, uh, the end of the conference and we are very very uh, grateful uh, to be here today to give you the support on the on protecting each and every partners and the key person of your company thank you so much once again you know smb chamber of commerce for arranging this thank you so much thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you for those valuable inputs. Now, may I call upon Mr. Abhiram Tirtha, who is the Senior General Account Manager, go to. Over to you, sir. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I have picked up uh, some Tamil, being a huge Rajnikanth fan myself. So, uh, I am Abhiram. Uh, I am the Account Manager with Go to. Uh, this is our third chapter with the uh, SME Chamber of India. So we did uh, sessions in Ahmedabad and Mumbai earlier, 
and it's uh, really great to be associated with uh, the growth story of India with SME. So before I start talking about uh, GoTo and what we do, so we will look at the world we are in, right? So it's a very uneasy world. So in 2020, we had the pandemic, and post that, we saw the war and uh, the geopolitical turmoil uh, which came through post that. And now, uh, you know, day in, day out, uh, we are looking at a recession and uh, news about it. So it has been extremely uncomfortable situation for any business for that matter. So through all these difficulties, you know, um, it has really changed the way we work. So hybrid and remote working has uh, become a new uh, normal. So basically, the what we realize through this difficulty is that, um, you know, staying connected is extremely important for any business. So staying connected with your customers uh, is essential. Staying connected with your employees is extremely essential. So however, it's not very easy, right? I'm sure that your IT teams uh, would have faced a lot of challenges uh, during these difficult times. And uh, there are increasing demands from each of these groups. So the customers are expecting the same level of customer service as when the businesses were working out of offices. And employees are even more empowered and they are expecting uh, remote work facilities. So basically getting these two groups connected is not an easy task. And in the middle of all this connection is go to. So we are all in one solution for essential connections. Uh, we have business communication and IT support software for supporting and uh, you know uh, your employees and your customers. So we have global partner ecosystem um, which you can leverage and connect with us. And we have integrations, out of the box integration with all the uh, you know leading CRMs and uh, uh, ticketing tools. So we are known for our reliability and security uh, with zero trust security architecture. And we have an uptime of 99.999%. We also support 24 bar seven dedicated support. So all this, and we are offering it uh, with one single app and a simple price. So just, um, you know, we look at the journey of GoTo. Uh, so it began in 2003, and uh, we are uh, pioneers in uh, remote support. I have a reason to tell this, uh, because our founder, Martin, so uh, he was located in Budapest. Uh, he was an IT agent. So every morning he had to travel from Buda to Pest uh, to basically uh, make uh, server updates and patches. So it was getting very difficult for him. And one day he really you know, sat and thought, what if he can do this remotely? And that was the inception of uh, remote support. So Logmin was founded uh, in 2003 as 3AM Labs. So post that in 2016, we acquired video conferencing from Citrix. So you might all be aware about GoToMeeting and GoToWebinars. So you might have attended a uh, few of the meetings or uh, webinars uh, through those tools. So that's uh, part of our portfolio. And then we moved on to become a billion dollar uh, business uh, with uh, you know, basically a leadership in remote support space. So in 2002, uh, we uh, basically rebranded ourselves as GoTo uh, from LogMeIn to better align with our values. So this is us now. In the core, we have customers and employees, and we, we have developed products around it. So we have GoTo Resolve, uh, that is for, for your remote access, remote support, remote monitoring and engagement. And we have GoTo Connect. Uh, which is mainly for your business communications, and your go-to meeting and go-to webinar is part of this portfolio. So uh, there is a survey uh, which says that um, most of the SMBs are uh, still using collaboration tools for uh, IT support, and they maintain all the tickets uh, on a spreadsheet. So this is a huge red flag in terms of uh, compliance. So uh, we went ahead and built a purpose-built product for SMB, which is GoToResolve, uh, that helps consolidating all your IT tools together. 
a quick stat on, um, you know, go to India. Uh, so we are around for a decade now. And uh, we have 45 plus SME focused partner, which includes Chennai as well. We have some great partners in Chennai. And we work with 2000 plus SME customers. And our R&D center is located in Bangalore, where I work right now. So this, this is our clientele. Uh, so you can see one of the biggest uh, IT companies like Microsoft, IBM, Lenovo. So they all use our uh, remote support tool called Rescue. And uh, you have um, you know, some of the uh, companies like Dunkin' Donuts and Arbor Paying. Um, they are using our collaboration tools. In, autom uh, in automobile space, we have Tesla. And uh, coming to healthcare, uh, we have Tenet Health. I'm sorry. So most of you here are uh, from the manufacturing sector, and hence I wanted to uh, highlight one of our product called Rescue Live Lens. Uh, this has a very special use case uh, which could be uh, really useful in the manufacturing sector. So looking at the primary use cases, so uh, Rescue Live Lens can be used for assisting online field engineers. So this is the visual support of what you can provide uh, using Rescue Live Lens. So ordering spare parts and replacements become very easy uh, with uh, using Rescue. And also remote installation of physical devices uh, becomes extremely seamless. So here you can see uh, that uh, an on-field agent is actually interacting with a support, uh, L1 support uh, person, um, and he's sharing the video there. So th these videos can be annotated from the L1 support, and uh, basically they can collaborate and resolve issue. So here you can see, uh, you know, an automobile field engineer uh, who is, uh, you know, repairing a uh, bike. And also, there is a broken laptop, and uh, the on-site field engineering is sharing uh, the video with the support person. Last, I would want to leave you with, the, um, you know, how HP user utilizes Live Lens and support their customer. Introducing Simply Live Lens for short. With centricity and innovation in our company DNA, HP is dedicated to engineering experiences that amaze. And our customer support is no exception. When our customers contact HP support, it has typically been through phone, chat. An agent answers their question and helps them troubleshoot remotely. Though these have been effective ways to support our customers, they are not without their challenges. With these support options, it can be difficult for both customers and agents to explain or troubleshoot an issue with a physical device or piece of equipment from far away. But what if customers could actually show their issue to our agents in real time? Powered by LogMeIn technology, Rescue Live Lens is a browser-based one-way video solution that allows agents to have an immediate live view of the customer's issue. Customers can connect easily with no app to install. They simply click on a URL sent via FTMS on the agent, and using the camera on their personal smartphone, customers can live stream video directly to our agents, eliminating the need for them to take photos to email to their agent. This also enables customers to give real-time feedback on the issue resolution to the agent. On the agent end, they can quickly identify technical issues visually, enabling them to remotely guide customers through troubleshooting, product setup, and then some. They also have the ability to draw or annotate on the paused video footage to visually guide and collaborate with the customer. Live Lens has many benefits, improved experience, Live Lens allows agents to efficiently bring solutions to our customers, a win-win for both customers and agents. Increased remote resolution rate. It also reduces unnecessary repair interventions. Sustainable impact. And by replacing trips to visit customers with remote support or shipping the right parts the first time, we make a positive impact on our planet by reducing the carbon footprint of support. Click the Playlist tab in YouTube to find HP videos in other languages. So thank you all. So basically, uh, Sibi Vergese from Airtel, so he uh, basically 
uh, Christian that are we really digitized. So that's where uh, we come in and we help SMBs in uh, uh, transforming, you know, in their digital transformation journey. So I'm more than happy to take questions or uh, if the time does not permit, we are right outside of uh, this hall. We have a booth there and uh, we have our team, uh, Sunil, uh, who is uh, part of uh, the SMB account management team. Uh, and we also have Kaushik, who is our partner management, uh, partner manager. So feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. We uh, should visit go to, go to the, their uh, booth. Thank you. Uh, friends, we have a very uh, eminent person and uh, very important trade partners, particularly for the import export. The Russian uh, Council General, His Excellency, uh, the uh, Mr. Oleg uh, Avdiu, Council General of uh, uh, Russia in Chennai. So I welcome Your Excellency to give a speech. So let's uh, give a big hand to him. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I was asked by the organizers of this uh, function to speak on the emerging opportunities for uh, Indian SME sector in Russia. I will definitely do this, but uh, before that I would like to say a few words about the economic grouping, uh, the Eurasian Economic Union of which Russia is a part. So uh, this grouping includes a part from Russia, includes four other CIS countries, and uh, this is a big economic block and the cooperation with it in is becoming more and more close uh, and I think it will be a very important player on the global economic scene in a short while. And just uh, suffice it to say that in the year of 2021, the trade volume between Eurasian Economic in, uh, Union and India was about $13 billion. But last year, from January to uh, November, uh, October, only this uh, statistic is available uh, as of now, the uh, volume was recorded at $32 billion. And this mainly happened due to sharp increase of Russian export of mineral resources, namely oil, coal, fertilizers. And uh, now the main task for the Eurasian Union is to diversify the composition of trade, which will definitely benefit Indian SMEs. And uh, we are also keen to increase the volume of Indian supplies to stabilize the trade balance between our countries. Indian industry has a robust trade market uh, with the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union. The main sectors are healthcare, pharmaceuticals, manufactured goods, processed food, agricultural produce, as well as financial and legal services, informational technologies. Uh, I could go on, but I think these are the most important areas. It is important to create favorable conditions for economic cooperation between India and the Eurasian Union. Certain steps are already being taken on bilateral basis. Between Russia and India, Kazakhstan and India, Belarus and India, Armenia and India, Kyrgyzstan and India, towards enhancing this cooperation to new levels. And uh, now I would uh, like to name just a few areas that Russia and India are currently working on. So our governments uh, came up with uh, instruments allow in settlement in national currencies. New sea routes are being established. Navigation connecting both eastern and western parts of Russia with India is working smoothly. So multinational, multimodal international north-south transport corridor is uh, being rapidly developed nowadays. I would like also to mention uh, that uh, currently an initiative is underway to relaunch a shipping route uh, between Chennai and the uh, Russian city of Vladivostok, which is uh, situated on the Pacific coast of Russia. Um, moreover, the governments of Russia and India are working for improvement of legal foundation 
for trade and economic cooperation, by which I mean bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement. Apart from elimination of tariff barriers, the work is also being carried out to remove non-tariff barriers. Relevant ministries intensified interaction on issues of both the countries. Uh, 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 they have intensified interaction on issues of certification, standardization, and allocation of quotas. The main mechanism of enhancing Russia-India economic and trade ties is Russia-India Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Technological, and Cultural Cooperation. Working groups and subgroups of this commission are constantly engaged in practical activities in order to implement the uh, list of bilateral projects as well as to find new promising areas of bilateral cooperation. The Ministry of Economic Development of the Russian Federation and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry Government of India have established a permanent mechanism aimed at eliminating trade, economic, and investment barriers. The structure uh, of the inter uh, Intergovernmental Commission includes uh, a subgroup which, uh, I which has been uh, set up especially to create this goal. Another mecha mechanism is the Russian Export Center. This is a joint stock company owned by the state and uh, uh, it is this institution was established by the government of uh, Russia to support non-commodity exports. The Russian Export Center group incorporates the Russian Agency for Export Credit and Investment Insurance and also Exim Bank of Russia. It aims to offer comprehensive integrated services for export-oriented companies. The Export Center offers a wide range of financial and non-financial support tools to benefit the Russian exporters and to explore the foreign markets and build capacity in global trade. The center also acts as a focal point for interaction with uh, relevant domestic ministries and agencies and cooperates with key industries and agencies uh, in Russia uh, and helping business players in Russia to improve the export uh, conditions and help them to bypass various trade barriers. All the services that the center provides are for non-commodities producers as well as goods and service exporters. The main task of the center is to assist companies with continued support from proposal and planning phase through successful uh, completion of the export contract and its implementation. Thus, importance of importers of Russian products as well as Russian exporters are protected by the center and the trade representations uh, of the Russian Federation, which are also helpful in uh, guiding exporters uh, in their business with other countries. Importers can apply uh, for the financial guarantee insurance products, expert support uh, s in finding also a reliable Russian supplier. For receiving above mentioned uh, products and services, Indian partners can uh, visit the website of the Russian Export Center. Other member states of the Eurasian Economic Union have their own experience in creating favorable uh, conditions for business uh, to develop cooperation with other countries. I believe uh, that currently uh, the most promising direction is conclusion of free trade agreement between the Eurasian Economic Union and India. The work on it has been going for several years already and now it time has come to intensify this work. With this FTA, we will be able to significantly increase trade, especially exports from India to the Eurasian Economic Union countries. The benefits of the FTA between India and the Eurasian Economic Union are manifold. The key advantages will be easier market access and removal of barriers to trade, ease of doing business, and sorting out consular issues 
to facilitate business travel. In addition to removing barriers and facilitation of market entry within the framework of uh, FTA, uh, I would like to also mention other advantages, uh, which will uh, which will be there uh, incorporated into the uh, FTA framework: promotion and technical collaboration, joint ventures and technical collaboration, reduction of customs duties, unified customs certificates, mutual recognition of quality standards. Another important area is investment promotion and investment security. And of course, uh, special attention should be paid to connectivity, that is development of transportation and logistics infrastructure and establishment of better and easier visa regime, including visas on arrival. So there are a lot of issues to discuss as cooperation between Eurasian Economic Union and India uh, looks very, um, very promising. With this, I conclude my speech. Thank you so much for attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much for your kind words. Friends, uh, now I'll open for a question answer. Uh, brief questions to the you know, right uh, panelist. Any would like to? Who is opening batsman? Say your name, your company yeah. name, yeah. sector, and question to the panelist. I am Professor Dr. Ramanan from CIT University, Vellore. As a professor of practice, in this budget, the Madam has announced the CGT MSC scheme, yeah. additional fund support of 9,000 crores. So our uh, Padmaji should be able to say, I am also representing the Lagul Jog Bharti, which has got 20,000 members in Tamil Nadu. So many of the members, I got the list of 100 members who are not able to get without collateral security. So what solution should you provide for that uh, applicant, sir? I was expecting the first question to Mr. Sharman. Please. Uh, sir, as far uh, It's on. Indian Bank is concerned. Uh, I, do, I don't think any hesitation is there on part of uh, lenders and giving the collateral free advance. Because earlier, that like if you see the DICTC and other schemes of the government of India, uh, lenders faced some issues earlier. But now the claim since is being settled in time and I don't think any hesitation is there. And uh, if you see in our bank, uh, majority of these uh, micro enterprises are covered under CGTSME. So there is no hesitation and uh, uh, we are rather encouraging in instead of uh, collateral security, we prefer to go for CGT as some coverage. Yes. You know, one thing I observed while you know, interacting with the bankers, when I am presenting issues and problems to the RBI regularly, there are 7 crore MSMEs in India, 6.33, but you know, there are many uh, self-employed. But those, you know, entrepreneurs, particularly those, those are not aware about how to prepare a proposal because Mr. Sharma is having abundant money in the bank. Only thing is that, you know, our entrepreneurs are not understanding how to submit a proposal, how to avail the services. There are plenty of services, plenty of financial product available. So how to take advantage of that uh, particular product that you have to decide, you have to learn, and you should take advantage of the other professionals also. So like uh, preparing proper cash flow, CMI data, project report, planning, business plan, then only it is uh, uh, possible. You know, we have started now uh, giving uh, the directions and advice to the SMEs. Instead of, you know, showcasing your balance sheet, only credit worthiness, you showcase your credibility also. So no bank will say no to you. Sharmaji, will you, will you able to deny any proposal? A proposal is well prepared, feasible proposal. From this forum, I will say that uh, uh, this association also, uh, they are educating the uh, micro and small customers, keep your civil intact, civil intact. That is the main hurdle which the uh, people who are re requesting for CGT, say, coverage, collateral free loans, that is the main hurdle. Keep your civil uh, score properly, please pay the whatever small loans you have taken in time, 
and uh, ACDJ company is not a, actually it is a facilitator rather thing. And we really appreciate uh, the budget improved in CGTA SME by the uh, government of India. See, along with that, you know, what is uh, uh, your uh, observation, Mr. Vinit Sukumarji, particularly on a banking and on a private uh, uh, like a NBFC, how the gap can be, you know, covered? So I think uh, in our experience, uh, what we bring to the market is speed and what the bank brings to this market is cost of capital and the ability to be able to uh, lend relatively larger amounts at much finer rates. And we believe that the partnership model using co-lending can work very, very well, right? It's an area where we are in discussions with Indian Bank as well, uh, where our speed, our access uh, to a wider array of customers coupled with the bank's cost of capital technology can be a very, very powerful partnership. Okay. Anyone? Yes. Ms. Jayanti. I have a question to Mr. Uli. Uh, there is a lot of crude oil demand which is coming from India and uh, there is a lot of demand which is happening outside of India also. So just want to know how do we actually channelize this uh, demand because there is a lot of duplication which happens in the market and because of which a lot of traders are also losing out in the market as well. So just would like to understand how do we channelize those leads that come into our chamber and how do we take it forward? Could you take an example of, uh, of such a lead? For trade, yeah, we keep getting some inquiries from the market as to we want this from the Russian embassy. Uh, if could you please get it verified by the Russian embassy? There is a lead which is coming in from the seller side as well as from the buyer side. So we actually do not know how exactly to verify the buyers and the sellers. Okay, not an area where we have expertise, ma'am. Unfortunately, because uh, our uh, our <laughs> offshore financing line is not live as of yet. So, not an area which. We are supporting right now. We do work with companies that deal in the space of oil, uh, where we support their rupee working capital needs. Uh, we are not in a position to support dollar as of now or any other currency. Okay. Anyone? Next question. Sir, my name is Trinath Kumar. Company called Ajanta KTK Products. For Airtel, I got one question, sir. Uh, we have connections, around 20 connections we have for your Airtel, Coimbatore and Chennai. Four years back, we closed one service in Coimbatore. Our payment is on ECS system. After th two years, they given that connection to another customer. It is corporate customer. But as ours is in ECS system, they detected in our account, rather detecting from them. When I approached your offices in Chennai, they didn't give proper answer, and they are telling go to court. We okay. have many works. Okay, let him let him answer. Court, okay, we can. Yeah, yeah, I understand your problem. So it is. Uh, I'll give my card or my team's uh, members uh, know uh, details. You can just write it back to us. So I'll just check with uh, you know the proper team how we can resolve this and we can resolve this as early as possible. Not an issue. Good. Thank you. Uh, I have a question to CG. What, are the, what is the currently expectation from the Russian uh, businesses, particularly importing from India? How the SME sector can, you know, prepared for uh, entering into Russian market? Looking at the current scenario, can you answer? As I told you, uh, Starting from the last year, the prospects of expanding cooperation between Indian manufacturer and Russia have been increasing. And mostly it was uh, uh, restricted to defense issues. Yeah? Uh, some parts for defense equipment which is produced in India under the uh, Make in India program. And uh, so they were produced here in India and used in uh, assembling uh, military equipment here in India. But now the, uh, with the uh, new mechanism of uh, ruble rupee mechanism e emerging and uh, uh, some markets now are not accessible to Russia. So the importance of India, Indian manufacturing industry is uh, increasing for Russia. And I think the, the it, is lo it looks very, very promising. Good. So let us take advantage for the export promotion or you know, import. 
because most of the uh, Russian companies also having quality products. Even I observed that a lot of uh, technological developed product they want to promote in India. And this will be good for our Indian uh, SMEs particularly to improve their capacity and capabilities. Any, any question? Yes, please. Uh, this is to this exchange Oleg. When do you propose to start this uh, shipping operation from Chennai to Russia? So this uh, idea uh, came up during the a few years ago during the summit on the on the uh, sidelines of the summit in Vladivostok, uh, in the the city which is on the Pacific coast of Russia. Uh, so, uh, and after that, a body was formed with, uh, particip uh, with uh, particip participants from relevant ministries of Russia and India. And this uh, uh, project is, uh, feasibility study is still going on. But I think that uh, it will take, it may take some uh, one year, maybe, um, maybe a couple of years, and it will start functioning in full force because it used to be there before. And the uh, far east of Russia is the point from uh, where many experts of mineral resources of Russia, timber, uh, fertilizers are going on. And this is maybe the closest uh, and the most convenient route to South India from Russia. And I think the uh, demand for those products which can be shipped from the far east of Russia in India will be growing. Okay, but we you. will have to wait uh, for some more time before the <coughs> relevant ministries of both come to a conclusion. But uh, definitely uh, the conclusion will be very positive because uh, it's uh, demand of time uh, that this uh, route be relaunched uh, once uh, relaunched uh, in the shortest possible time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So thank you, friends. Uh, now we'll close for the question and answer. And thankful to all the speakers and panelists for giving uh, insight to our members. Thank you very much. <laughs>